Hi everyone! This looks pretty ugly now, but it actually turns into one of the most beautiful flowers in the garden, the dahlia. Now dahlias attract bees, butterflies, they attract all the pollinators. They're one of my most favorite flowers to grow. You grow them from seed, but it's a lot easier to grow them from tubers like this. So today I'm going to show you how to pot up your dahlia tubers for earlier blooms in the spring. Dahlias come in all different colors, shapes, and sizes from large dinner plate types of blooms to smaller pom-pom dahlias, they're called. They're called tender perennials, which means they don't take frost. So if you live in a cold winter area, what you want to do at the end of the bloom time in the fall and early winter is dig them up and store them in an area that doesn't get too cold. In temperate climates though, like here in Southern California, the tubers will overwinter in the ground as long as things don't get too soggy, they'll be okay. You can get dahlias online from a variety of different sources. I got these from Eden Brothers. Kinda went crazy with the dahlias this year because I love them so much. But it's super easy to pot them up. They do take about two to four weeks to start sprouting out leaves. So you can start them indoors about four to six weeks before your last frost date. Or if the weather's warm enough where you live, you can sprout them in pots right outside until your garden beds are ready. Step one is choose your container. If you have small dahlia tubers, you can choose one of the nursery pots that's like six inches or so deep. These ones are pretty large, so I'm gonna put them in my one gallon Cali Kim Smart Pots. Whatever container you choose, it's really important that it has drainage. Dahlia tubers particularly are susceptible to rotting if they're in too wet of soil. So definitely choose some, some containers with really good drainage. Now step two is to choose yourself a nice, well-draining potting mix. I've actually got my DIY seed starting mix. I'm reusing it for my dahlia tubers, but I did add a handful of worm castings to the mix to give it some nice organic nutrients. And I only filled my pots about three to four inches deep, and I'll tell you why that's important in just a moment. And you do need to make sure your soil is nice and loose. Don't use a heavy clay soil, or like I mentioned, your dahlia tubers can rot. Now, let me just share with you the anatomy of a dahlia. The first part of the dahlia is the tuber or the body of the dahlia. So you can see here there's several tubers on this particular dahlia, which is perfectly fine. You can split them apart if you want to, or you can just leave them together, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, the second part of the dahlia is the neck. So here's the little neck part. And the third part of the dahlia or is the eye or the growing point. Now the eye can sometimes be a little bit tricky to find. Typically it's up near the neck. In this particular case it's underneath the neck, but usually it's a small uh, kind of swollen part of the tuber. In this one the eyes are already showing little signs of sprouting, so that gives me a good little clue as to where the eyes are on this particular tuber. Let me show you another tuber where the eye is not sprouting, so you can more easily identify it. Sometimes the eyes can be a little bit tricky to identify, but don't worry about it. With a little bit of practice, you'll get it down. So here, the eye is kind of the swollen little part here. See how there's kind of a little raised bump? That's the eye right there. What you want to do in your containers is place your dahlia tuber in the container with the eyes facing up, because that's the growth point. We're just going to set it down here in the soil. Now I'm going to set my plant tag just at the front of the dahlias here so I don't forget what variety I'm planting. This one is so pretty. I've never grown it before. It's called the Belle of Barmera. It's a really beautiful dahlia that has coral, peach, and raspberry petals with a little twist at the end. So I'm really excited to grow that. Now in the purple one gallon smart pots, I'm going to put the dinner plate dahlias. Very excited to grow these. These are huge eight inch blooms absolutely gorgeous, like the size of a dinner plate. So we'll just stick this down in here. This is quite a large tuber. So this one gallon might actually be a little bit on the small side for that. You can see I've got the eyes pointing up, the tubers pointing down. In this particular case, the neck is underneath the tubers here. If you get things switched around, no big deal. Your dahlias are still gonna grow. In my third um, Smart Pots here, I'm gonna put the Rembrandt mix which has smaller blooms with speckled petals. Super beautiful dahlia. Can't wait to grow this one either. So you can see here, we've got the tubers, the body of the dahlia plant. The neck on this one is right here on top. Then we've got some little sprouts coming out here from the eye. So we're gonna put the eye facing up, kind of nestle it down in the soil there. 
So as long as your dahlia tubers have those three parts, the body or the tubers, the neck and the eye, they're gonna be viable. Now let me show you a little example. These little tubers actually broke off during the shipping process. They only have the tubers, there's no neck and there's no eye. So these won't be viable and I'm not gonna plant these. So we've got step one, our containers. Step two, our soil, which by the way, I did pre-moisten. So the dahlias have a little bit of moisture to start off with. You don't want soggy soil, so just make sure it's nice and light, like crumbly brownie mix. Step three is to put the, plant the dahlias. Step four is to cover them with soil. Now I'm not gonna fill the container all the way up. I'm just gonna barely cover the dahlia tubers. So we'll put a couple handfuls of soil here around the dahlia tubers. And the reason why you wanna do this is dahlia tubers, like I mentioned, I can't emphasize enough, are very susceptible to rotting if the soil gets too moist. So by just barely covering the tubers, you can see when the new growth starts to emerge. And as long as your soil is nice and moist, you don't need to water it until you see those new little seedlings kind of sprout from the soil. So you can see here I'm even leaving the little neck exposed. Even if you leave a few of the little eyes sticking out, that's perfectly okay. But this will just give you a little sign as to when your dahlias start to grow. And then that's when you start to water them. So I'll just leave that little eye sticking out. Pop in the tags. The surface of your soil is dry. You can just spray it just until it's moistened. Now what you wanna do is, if you're starting your dahlias indoors, they don't need light until they germinate. So once you see some growth from the little eyes, you wanna put them under grow lights. They germinate best at temperatures between 68 and 85 degrees. So if your house is cold, you may wanna use a heat mat to kinda of speed things up. Now, if it's warm enough outdoors, today is a beautiful day, about 70 degrees, you can definitely do your pre-sprouting process outside and leave your containers outdoors. But we're expecting another big rainstorm tomorrow. So these are gonna go inside at the end of today so the soil doesn't get too soggy and the tubers don't rot. That's all there is to it, a simple step-by-step -step process to get blooms on your dahlia plants earlier. They're gonna bloom from early summer to late in the fall until the weather gets too cold. So I wanna know if you're gonna grow dahlias along with me this spring and summer. Subscribe, we're gonna bring you along through every single step of the process. I know you're gonna love growing them and I can't wait to have the big beautiful blooms in my garden. And quick little note, the April Grow Your Groceries with Callie Kim subscription box is now available. Grab it over at CallieKimGardenAndHome.com if you haven't yet. Get $5 off your first month's box with the code APRILSUBBOX. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.